And there's a crumple. The transfer function. of a discrete causal system is given by H of Z. We are to determine the cascade and parallel realizations. So let us see what H of Z looks like. H of Z is equal to 1 minus Z inverse divided by 1 minus 0 0.2 Z inverse phi z inverse 2 so let's go to the solution our task is to show the system as a cascade of two systems now what does cascading means so if our input x of n is given to a system h of n then the output will be y of n now if we can design a system such that x of n goes through h1 of n and then h2 of n and finally give out the previous result y of n then h1 of n and h2 of n are said to be in cascaded form that means that both the systems will eventually represent h of n so this is our cascade configuration now let us observe mathematically how it can be achieved so first of all we have our h of z which is equal to 1 minus z inverse minus 0 0.2 z inverse minus 0 0.15 z inverse 2 task is to multiply the numerator and the denominator with the highest power in which case is z squared z squared minus 0 0.2 z 1 5 then we need to factorize this polynomial and this will give us z minus 0 0.5 z plus 0 0.3 you can do this very easily using the calculator and the numerator will be z squared 1 minus z raised to the minus 1 so, <coughs> finally what we get, h of z is 1 minus z inverse, 1 minus 0.5 z inverse, and 1 plus 0 0.3 z inverse. Just dividing the numerator and denominator, with z squared once again so in order to make this system in a cascaded form we must divide it into two systems say the first one is z raised to minus 1 5 z inverse this is the first transfer function say this is h1 of z and the second transfer function is 1 over this is h2 of z 
Then in order to make them cascade, we simply multiply the two transfer function and this will give us a form like this. So now what we need to do is individually <coughs> construct the direct form 2 of this individual systems. So let us consider this system first. Now before going to the construction point to be noted the numerator can be multiplied in this system or in this system as well. It is left to the user preference. I am using this to be the numerator of my first system. You can do it the other way but it is better to keep one notion so that you may avoid any sort of confusion later on. So in order to just work with this system and draw the direct form 2 realization so we will have an input x of n in case of output we consider temporary output let it be w of n so here will be our x of n and the highest number of delay in both the cases is 1 so this will be z inverse this is our pick off point so now let us plot so in direct form 2 the pole will come first so here in the left hand side we shall plot the pole so this point is 1 so 1 will go let me give a summation 1 will go as a multiplier to the output or rather this pick of point then we have negative of 0.5 this will come as a feedback so 0 0.5 since this is negative sign it sign will change as it is coming as feedback this summation operator so this is the all pole system done all zero system so 1 is there, so this will go to the output, say there is a plus, that's 1, no sign change. And here the coefficient is 1, so after a delay of 1, this will go over here with a multiplying factor of negative of 1. See, no sign change over here. So this is the direct form 1 done. Now what we need to do is also construct the direct form of this transfer function. But in this case we shall not take x of n as input, we shall take our w of n as the new input. So this is our input and our output will be y of n. The highest number of delay z inverse 1 so we we'll plug in z inverse 1 as the unit delay block first we determine the poles so this one will go directly to the pick off point there is a plus the one goes over here this is 1 3 will come point 3 will come as feedback after the delay so point 3 comes as the feedback this is 0 0.3 of course it should be negated as it is a feedback loop so this is the all pole part done for the all zero part what we have is just one so from this pick of point a simple multiplier one will be present here since there is no delay we need not take any arms to the output so this is our required cascade form where it must be mentioned that this is our h1 of z and this will be H2 offset. 
For the same transfer function, let us look at the parallel form. So our given transfer function from the previous page was 1 minus z raised to the minus 1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.5 z inverse plus 0 0.3 z inverse and in case of parallel realization the system looks something like this if x of n is our input and y of n is our output the system is divided into two subsystems which occurs parallelly to one another so this one is h1 of z h2 of z an analogy may help in this matter consider the parallel form to that of our basic circuit parallel circuit and the cascade form to the series circuit so this is our parallel circuit representation if you know what I mean so say there are two resistances this two point if we give a supply so this is will be our parallel circuit whereas the series circuit will look something like this so this is our cascade form this is our parallel form so in order to make the system in this manner in cascade form we saw that h of z is represented as h1 of z times h2 of z in order to make it cascade so in order to make it parallel h of z needs to be represented in h1 of z plus h2 of z form so this is our form that we seek after so now let us move on so in order to get this form we need to apply the method of partial fraction in order to divide this part so to do so we write h of z as z squared 1 minus z inverse z minus 0.5 z plus 0.3 just multiplying the numerator and denominator with z squared this will be equal to z times z minus 1 z minus 0.5 z plus 0.3 and now we may apply the partial fraction method so applying partial Now, as per the law of partial fraction, it is well known to us that the index of the numerator must always be less than the index of the denominator. So, previously, the number of partial fractions that we have solved, for all the cases, the index of the numerator was lower than that of the index of the denominator. But now, if you look closely, so z times z, here the highest index is z squared, here also z times z, the index is z squared. So in both the cases, what we are facing is that the indices matches to the numerator and the denominator. Rather, the index of the numerator is not less than that of the denominator. So in order to get rid of this extra index, what we can do is simply divide both sides by z. So this becomes h of z by z j equals z inverse 1 minus 0 0.5 0 0.3 now if you look the index of the numerator is less than that of the denominator so this can be identified as a z minus 0 0.5 plus b z plus 0.3 and 
a will be equal to h of z over z times the denominator of a where z is equal to 0 0.5 so plugging the values of h of z we get h of z over z that is this one z minus 1 z minus 0 0.5 plus z plus 0 0.3 times 5 where z goes to 0.5 this two will cancel each other out and finally just providing the value you will get a to be equal to minus 0 0.625 Similarly, if you solve for B, it will come to be 1.625. So, so, we can write H of Z to be simply equal to 1.625 Z times Z plus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.625 Z say this plus and take the negative sign over here z minus 0 0.5 just replacing the value of b and a and this z is taken as cross multiplier so initially we had the form as z raised to the negative power so we need to take it back to that form so this one will become 1.625 if we divide the numerator and denominator by z, 1 plus 0 0.3 z inversed, 0 0.625, 1 minus 0 0.5 z inversed. So this is our h1 of z and this is our h2 of z. So once again we need to draw the direct form 2 for the both the systems so let us look at h1 of z so say there is an input x of n and there will be an output y of n and the maximum number of delays 1 so we need one delay block there is an adder block this one will go as it is to this pick off point this three will be turned as feedback so here it is 0 0.3 and the sign will be changed so this is negative 0 0.3 and here in the zero part the only coefficient is 1.625 and no delay part so we simply take this and join it with our output and make it 1.625 so this is our direct form 2 done for the first system we do the same thing for the second system so we take an input and we have an output no need to mark it as x of n or y of n at this point so the highest number of delay once again is z raised to minus one there is an adder over here this one will follow through to the peak of point as a multiplier minus 0 0.5 will come as feedback so it was initially minus 0 0.5 and due to feedback it will become positive 0 0.5 so this is our all pole system done and similarly for the all zero system we just simply connect these two points since there are no delays involved so this becomes negative 0 0.625 remember since the flow is towards the output the signs will not be changed so 
this is the direct form of H2 offset. Now in order to make them parallel, what we do is just connect this to input side and connect this to output side with an adder over here. So this is an adder and this becomes y of n and the input <coughs> we take a peak of point so this becomes x of n this will be x of n and the input is x of n so this is our required parallel form where this is h1 offset and this representation is h2 offset so that was our parallel form and with this we come to the end of our lecture series on ec393 that is digital signal processing and all there is left to say is hope you have understood all the videos if you feel any sort of problem feel free to contact me and wish you all a very good luck and congratulations to your promotion to the next level or rather the next term and hope to see you all soon after this awful event that is the world is going through thank you all goodbye